Thank you, Chris, for advancing that, and thank you, Ron and Wade, for um, asking me to be part of this. And and uh, I'm I'm a part of it, right? I'm just kind of the organizer part of it. But I really want to talk this morning. Starting out, it's going to be kind of two sections. Uh, the first section will kind of be prayer and praise. You know, what what does it look like? Uh, what does it mean? Uh, what does prayer mean? What does praise mean? Um, and then the second part will be kind of like a, all right, here's some of my thoughts, my ideas, uh, my concepts, uh, plans, and a whole bunch of that will be involving you and and getting your ideas and thoughts and suggestions, and we just work together on this. And so I, I really want to focus on those two things this morning. Let me uh, just ask... Well, before I go into this, let me give you a synopsis of what has happened over the last 24 hours in my life. <laughs> Part of prayer is just transparency, right? It's just, this is where I am. <laughs> this, is, this is what's happening to me. Um, I had been working on a lesson uh, for the past week or two, and uh, yesterday, uh, early afternoon, I went to go and pull up that Word document, and for some reason, it was gone. It was gone. All my thoughts and things I had done, uh, and I searched for an hour to try to restore. I, maybe some of you are gurus on that, but I think there was a sync issue where the same file name got overwritten with the, all the changes I had made to this Word document, and so I lost everything. But I didn't really lose everything. Um, so I went back and I quickly recreated what I had done, and, and so uh, looking back on it, I, I'm wondering if that wasn't a part of God's plan to say, you know, Laverne, um, prayer isn't something that you document and get formatted and get you it's just conversation with God right so I'm gonna have a conversation okay and I want to have a conversation with you what does prayer look like I mean when you when you think of prayer what, what when you think of your prayer life what do you see or what have you heard or or, or where where are you at in that is it, is it formal? Does prayer need to be formal? Does it need to um, have formality around it? Does it need to be uh, structured? Does it need to be, does it have to have a prescription? In other words, do you have to have all of these ingredients in the prayer for it to be a prayer? You know, sometimes we we tend to look at prayer like that. It's all right. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that, and I got to do this in this order. Otherwise, uh, is that really a prayer? You know. Um, has it felt to you like at times in my life it has felt to me like these are the things I need to do today? And prayer is the thing I got to do. And in my mind, I structure it as it's a great thing to do. I really want to do it. And uh, if my, in order to get my day started right, I, I need to pray. And so, okay, here I got five minutes. All right, God, I, I, I'm coming to you. Here's the stuff I need. Um, send me on my way. Is, is that what prayer is? Um, <laughs> does it feel like sometimes you're checking in with the boss to kind of give them like, all right, this is what I did today. This is, this is what I accomplished. This is what I need. You know, um, here's my need list for me to accomplish the stuff you have for me to do. You know, does it feel like that to you? At times it has in my life. Uh, it, it, it really has. Um, let me ask you what praise to God looks like for you. Like, what, 
When you hear that idea, that concept, what do you, what comes to mind when you say, I want to praise God? Is that something that you see as kind of schmoozing the, the boss, right? It's, oh, you know, we, we, <laughs> I'm going to lavish things on the boss so that I get what I want. Is that what, is that what praise is? I, I'm not saying anybody's doing that, but I'm wondering if we could, in the back of our mind, and I'm wondering if I haven't in the past been, as I approach God and I approach him, and what, what I typically do in prayer is, is I typically feel like I need to just praise God to start with. Because I don't bring anything to this. I, I don't bring anything to God that he's just like impressed with, Right? So my first reaction to coming before God tends to typically be, you're just amazing, God. You're awesome. I can't believe you've created all this for me to enjoy. Why, you know? And, but I, I mean, I don't know if I had an ulterior motive, but I wonder if at times maybe I do. You know, I've got something big to ask for God and... You know, if I really, like, lay it on, you know, like, lay it on and butter him up, then he'll give me what I want. Hmm. I had to think about that one. Um, is it sincere? Is it really sincere? Or do I feel like if I go to a psalm and I read a psalm, and psalms are, are great places to go to just hear praise that, that David gave or that others have given God, and we can use those things. But even as we use them, is it, do we really feel that way? It's, guess my question, right? Is it really? Is that really my feeling? Or is I, am I just using it to say that I praised God and move on <laughs> with, with, with some other things, right? Authentic, is it authentic? Um, do we view it as a kind of a quid pro quo? Like, all right, God, I'll give you what you want, and then you give me what I want. <laughs> or if I give you what you want, then you'll give me what I want. And so I just ask that we just, just think about that, right? Just, just examine our hearts, um, Consider those things and, and just look, look at ourselves as we delve into some scripture. So what I could throw up on here, all the verses that talk about prayer. I have them, but I'm pretty sure you've heard them. Okay. Pray without ceasing. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. We, we could do all that. I don't want to do that this morning. But what I want to do is I just want to, I just want to look at ways that people approached Jesus and examine what they did as they approached Jesus. And at the time, we're going to see from these verses, they're not coming to Jesus and what, offering what we would think of as just a prayer. But they're making requests. They're asking something of Jesus. And I think we can learn from that. And so I want us to just learn together this morning. What is... As we pray, and I'm, this morning I'm mainly focusing on prayer versus praise, versus the praise aspect of it, um, but that, that will come with, with more time that you hear from me. Um, so regarding prayer, prayer requires humility, and I think we all understand that. Uh, one passage that I, that I want to read for us this morning is this passage in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14, where Jesus actually tells a parable of two men 
coming to the temple to pray. And each man has a different agenda. Each man has a different approach. Let's just look at it. So in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14, it says this, And he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. What's going through your mind right now? Hearing that? You, you don't have to say it out loud. I, I just, like, like, how do you react to that prayer? Okay. What kind of irritates me slightly? I, slightly is maybe too calm of a word. Um, what really gets my goat, maybe if that's another word, raises my blood pressure is the arrogance and the pride, and not only of this is what I've done, God, but I'm not like that guy in the corner. But, verse 13, the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Two different people going to the same God with two different agendas. And Jesus says this in verse 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Which man? The tax collector. He went down to his house justified, righteous, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will will be exalted. So we have this amazing picture. And keep, keep this picture in your mind at all times. As you approach God, your Father, where do you fall? Like, is the, there's probably a range, right? The, the, the Pharisee is like way on one end and the, and the tax collector is way on the other end. And maybe at times we're somewhere in the middle. Do you want to be justified? If you want to be justified, where are you going to be? Where are you, where are you going to be? All that, all that the, the tax collector could do is beat his breast. God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. So it requires humility. It requires humility. Prayer also requires, or may involve, it, it may, crying out tears and begging. Let's go to look at another example. In Luke chapter 18, uh, same, same section here. But down in, in verse 35 through 43, uh, it, it, we have this account. And he says, and he, as he drew near to, to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging and hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is, pa- Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Here we have a scenario. We have a blind beggar. Blind beggar. Can't see. We don't know how long he hasn't been able to see, but he's begging. He's been begging for food. He's been begging for money. He's been begging for help. Who knows how long? And here he hears Jesus of Nazareth passing by, and in desperation and in urgency, he cries out. He doesn't care what people think. He just says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have you ever has have you ever done that? Have you ever been in a situation where you there's nothing but there's nothing to do but just say, Oh God, help, help me. I don't know what to do. To, for me, that happened a lot when our kids were little. <laughs> Four kids, under 10. Help! <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, there were times I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to resolve the conflict. I didn't know, like, what am I going to do? What do I say in this situation to help? And sometimes, as a parent... All you do is just cry, help, God, help. Show me the way. Give me the words. Give me the reaction as I walk up these stairs and deal with these two children. And he did. He did. I don't know, I don't know where that thought came in my mind once I sat down and had to deal with these issues, but it came. And it was like, Phew, that didn't come from me. Are there times when you want to just see? See. Not physically, but just see. Cry out. Beg. Weep. Before our Father for help. And when he was healed, what did he do? He glorified God. He, there's like, you can't stop me. <laughs> I'm going gl- to praise God. I'm going to thank God. I'm going to give him the credit. It was all him. It was not me. Have mercy on me. Here's the example of Jesus in, in Hebrews 5, verse 7. It says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. To him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. So sometimes we just cry. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to handle this. We're desperate, just like, a blind, just like the blind beggar, and we need whatever God will provide for us. Prayer should involve falling on our faces. This was something... Um, I, I started doing, I never did this as a kid. I never did this as a teenager. I never did it as a, a guy in my, I don't think I was in my 20s when I ever did it. I'm 55 now. And one morning I just decided I'm going to go in my closet and I'm just going to get down on, on my knees and put my head on the floor and my arms out in front of me and I'm going to pray. 
and it totally changed my prayer life. Because the physical posture invoked and forced my heart into the same posture. (laughs) And you don't feel any more humble than when you're face down on the ground. So I would encourage you, if you haven't ever done that, to do it, to try it. And it's not like a try it as in, oh, this is, you know, a method or whatever that's going to make it any more significant. (coughs) But it may. It may change your life. It may change your heart. It may, it, it may cause you to realize things that you haven't realized. In Luke chapter 5, here's an example, uh, 20 uh, verses 12 and 13. It says, while he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and saying, I will be clean, and immediately the leprosy left him. Here's a man who could not be touched and could not touch. And in desperation, he just comes to Jesus, the healer, and and falls on his face and begs him and begs him. Another thing that it requires other than humility and and crying out and tears and begging and falling on our faces is that it, it is loving others enough to bring them before the great physician for healing and for help. It's not just about me. And in all the examples we've looked at so far, The individual person was coming before God. But in this example we're about to look at, it's a mom bringing her daughter to Jesus to heal. And prayer is not only for ourselves, but more unselfishly, it's for others and us being willing to take them to Jesus. In Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 25, it says, Immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, uh, let the children be fed first, for it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord. Let me stop. What Jesus said, his response to her, could very well have been taken as harsh as a Syrophoenician woman. But look at her response. Her response is, yeah, yes, I accept that. I, yes, Lord, you're right. And I'm, that's humility. I am, I am who I am. I can't change that. I, I get it, Lord. But can I have a crumb? <laughs> can, can I have some crumbs, please? Please, beg, you know, begging. Even, yet even the dogs under the table eat the cr- children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter, and she was healed. Because of her faith and her confidence and trust. So let's, let's go to this. Let's change gears a little bit. So for whom should we pray? 
For, for whom should we pray? And I'm, I'm going to go to um, the story of, of the Good Samaritan. And let's, let's look at this. This will kind of be the final verse that we take, take a look at this morning. In Luke chapter 10, with the idea of for whom shall we pray, I'm going back to this particular scripture because here a lawyer, I'm just going to start reading the passage, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, put Jesus to the test. And he said, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what's written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Let's we'll stop there. I'm just asking the question. He asked the question, who's my neighbor? I'm supposed to love them, but who, who can I love? Like, who do I, who do I have to love, maybe, right? Who, who am I supposed to love? And I'm just asking the question, who do I have to pray for? Who am I supposed to pray for? So frame it in that, in, in that sense. And he's wanting to justify himself. And so Jesus replies in verse 30, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise the Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. So what do we have going on here? We have a man going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He's robbed. He's stripped naked. He's beaten. And he's left half dead. Picture that in your mind. A priest comes by, sees him, passes by. Levite comes by, sees him, passes by. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take, uh, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and you do likewise. So the question, for whom should I pray? Who do you see? Right? Who do you see? The priest and the Levite saw the exact same man in the exact same condition and yet passed by. The priest was the first person to arrive on the terrible scene, but he passed by on the other side for whatever reason. He didn't want to deal with it. The Levite was the second person to arrive on the scene. And for whatever, he saw the same thing, for, but for whatever reason, he passed by on the other side. The Samaritan was the third person to arrive on the terrible scene. But the Samaritan was the first responder.
right? He had compassion on the naked, beaten, half-dead man. He gave up his time. He gave up his plans. He gave up his oil. He gave up his wine. He gave up his money. He gave up his ride for the person, for the man. In order to be a neighbor to the poor, beaten, abandoned man. Will you pass by on the other side? Will, will I pass by on the other side? Will you be a first responder? You and I, what's really cool, what's really cool is that maybe, maybe you don't have oil, maybe you don't have wine, maybe you don't have an animal, maybe you don't have money, but can you pray? Can I, can I pray? Regardless of our age, regardless of our strength, regardless of our financial wealth or ability, we can all prove to be a neighbor by at least, at a minimum, be willing to pray and be willing to, just as this Samaritan took this man to the inn and took care of him, you and I, in prayer, we lift up and we take and carry broken Sick people, those who have had losses, who have heartache, who are lonely, who have had injustice brought to them, who have been abandoned, and just like they've been stripped and beaten like this poor man, we can take those people to our God and Father for help. Be a neighbor. Prove your love. Jesus says, go and do likewise. So we get it, right? We, we understand. I want to lead us in a prayer, and then I'll get into the, into the practical things that we want to go forward and do. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we acknowledge your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, your grace. We're in desperate need of all of those. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love and mercy to reach down into this world and to make a way for us to be saved, forgiven, justified. Thank you so much for that gift of life. Father, as we... Seek to pray to you and to grow in our prayer lives and in our praise lives. Give us wisdom and insight. We don't know what to do. We don't always know the right thing to say. All we can do is sometimes bring others to you. And you know what they need. So help us to be first responders, to react, to help. By your power and by your grace and for your glory. Through Jesus, we pray. Amen. The prayer and praise ministry, um, these are my thoughts, ideas. Uh, uh, I need your help. <laughs> First thing I'm going to say. The, th these are my thoughts, ideas. I'm going to go through these. There is a, um, a two-sided 
paper out front you can grab. I'm going to be emailing you these as well. So if you don't, there's only 20 of them out there. So if, if there's not one there when you get there, you'll get it in your email, trust me. Um, um, so what's kind of like the purpose or the goal here, right? What's the purpose and goal? It's to really effectively communicate prayer and praise requests to the whole body. As the body of Christ, as your own body, you've got nerve systems in your body uh, to, to spread information. I want to help spread information. I want to uh, spread good information and bad information, uh, difficulties and prayer requests to the whole body. Uh, encourage every member of the body to pray and to praise more effectively. Uh, stir up love and good works in each member of the body in order to fulfill the one another commands. There's so many one another commands, and you, you'll find them on the sheet uh, that is back there. And then really to share our lives with each other as a family. Um, I've got to be willing, I've got to be willing to admit to you, I have a need, help, <laughs> right? Sometimes, sometimes we don't want to admit that. Sometimes we feel like, well, you don't need to know that. You know, I don't, you're not going to really care about that. Well, if we don't know, then we can't fulfill the one another commands because I can't weep with you and I can't rejoice with you. And I can't comfort you and I can't encourage you because I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on, right? And so I just want to encourage you be, be open, be vulnerable, be, be real, so that your family can help, can help, okay? Um, let's look at just some methods or, or tools that we're going we're gonna to try to use and implement. We want to, we're, we're, we're going to, we're not going to, we don't want to, we are going to, okay? Every month of the year that has five Sundays in it, we're going to take that fifth Sunday evening service and just have a prayer, praise service. It's going to be flexible. It's going to be, you know, we just take, take requests. It's going to be different. That's all right, right? We're just going to pray. We're going to praise. And however that looks, we're going to honor and, and bring that to God. So we're going to start that. The... the uh, the first one is March 31st, and then there's June 30th, September 29th, and December 29th as well. Uh, uh, sending out the prayer and praise list via email or text. Um, you know, I think Ron was, was really handling that, okay? Um, I'm going to be doing that now, okay? And I'm going to take all your requests, so you can inundate me if you want. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll be praying to just be able to deal with it, you know, but... <laughs> So from now on, like, I'm not saying you can't send a request to Ron or to Wade. If you do, they're going to forward them to us. But I'm going to say, you know, just bypass them and go to me directly. They'll get the information. If you want to include them as well, that's totally fine, okay? Um, I'm not trying to supplant them at all in your request, but let me know. I'm going to put everything together. I'm going to send out prayer and praise lists twice a week. Okay? It's probably going to be like a Tuesday and like a Friday, I'm thinking, right now. I mean, we'll just we'll adjust as we need, but that's kind of the thought right now. Okay? Um, and, and send, uh, I want to send just practical praise or prayer suggestions, you know? No, I got a bunch of them, but you probably get tired of me sending those out. I don't know. I don't want to be too, too much because that you just shut it off at some point, like I do. Like if I get something from somebody every day, I just like I don't want to hear that. So if it's too much, let me know, okay? Okay, just let me know. I, I, I can deal with it. Okay. Um, so I just want to send out those types of things. Um, we, I want to organize prayer and praise huddles. I call them a huddle. I know that's a football thing, but us guys kind of understand it. But the thought is 
Um, you know, we are spread out geographically from Green Bay. Wait, wait, we got Green Bay. We got uh, over there on the the Michigan Lake, Lake Michigan. Way over there, we got south, we got west, we got north. Is it easy for all of us to get together and pray together? It's hard, it's hard, right? This is online. This is like a virtual time when, hey, you got time, I got time, we don't have to spend any gas. Get on the line, get on the phone, get on whatever. Let's, let's pray together. And it could be broken up into groups, right? We could have one, just everybody who can. It's not, every, it's not like we're going to force anybody, but hey, let's get together and pray. Maybe there could be a men's group, a women's group, singles, young people, married with kids. Do you guys have things to ask for prayer? Yeah. I, so whatever you would like, and I need help for those who just want to facilitate those, right? If you want to do that, you can do it, okay? So let me know, um, and we can work out whatever details we need. Monthly prayer themes, like each, of the, each month of the year will have a prayer theme, depending on sometimes there's holidays or, or things going on, on that, in that month. We'll just have a month of that type of, of theme going on. So what can you do? Send me your prayer and praises via text or email. Um, my email address, my text, my cell, my, which is also my text, you can text me, you can email me, you can call me, um, you can come to my house, but that's like way over in Wapaka, so that might be a little bit harder. Uh, don't let distance deter you, okay? Because there's no distance when we can communicate effectively with each other. Give me your ideas and suggestions. You know, whatever you think might work or has helped you uh, even. And uh, just help organize prayer huddles. Uh, that, would be, that would be awesome and great. And you can talk to me. Uh, just be real, honest, and encouraging. That's all it takes, right? So that's, um, and just start where you are and grow with your family in Christ. That's where we are, right? If we all want to, if we all want to, pray for each other. We want to pray for those even that are not among us, right? We've just heard this morning prayer requests for, for brethren and family and friends in other areas, okay? And, and so let's, let's do that. Let's be involved. Let's be the body and be the hands and feet of Jesus as we take others to Jesus and to, fa to our Father as well in prayer. Thank you for your time and attention this morning. I know that was a little extra long. Um, we're going to have a, a song here that Matt's going to lead us. And so this is just a song of, of, of glorifying God, right, of giving honor and praise to him. So let's stand and let's glorify our Father with this last song. <laughs>